Welcome to Cooking School. Everyone loves a delicious, well-made salad. Cold, crisp leaves of any kind of lettuce dressed with homemade vinaigrette is a perfect lunch. Today, I'm going to teach you a few classic salads. First, a traditional French bistro recipe for frisé with lardon and poached eggs. This may become your new favorite. Then a chopped salad that my daughter Alexis loves to make, full of fresh vegetables, a great vegetarian lunch or dinner. Next, a classic Caesar salad with homemade croutons made in a traditional wooden salad bowl. Even the dressing is made in the bowl. And last, a Japanese-inspired butter lettuce salad presented in a most unusual way. When I invite guests to lunch, I love to make frisé au lardon. It's a French classic salad made with spicy greens, crisp bacon, creamy poached eggs, and a warm vinaigrette. A taste of Paris brought right to your table when you serve a frisé au lardon. Frisé is a member of the chicory family. It's also an endive. And what I like for this classic salad is just the center yellow leaves. And you can find this at the farmer's market. You can also find it in a grocery store. And uh, this is the center. It has a little tiny bit of green on it, but it's pretty. Uh, well washed, spun dry. The leaves should be separate. And then just fluff the leaves into your salad bowl. Now, the bacon. Use slab bacon. This you can find at the butcher good, fragrant, smoky bacon. It adds an excellent flavor to your salad. Cut the slab into quarter inch slices like this, and then cut the slices crosswise into quarter inch lardon. These will go into a large skillet and cook until crispy and brown. And don't throw away the fat. The rendered fat is for your dressing. So this is a, a little bit of a rich salad, especially with the poached eggs. While cooking the lardon, just keep turning them, and they're gonna get uh, evenly cooked on all sides. While this is happening, you can poach your eggs. Now, I love to make poached eggs, and I usually do the eggs in a four or five inch deep pot like this. Two tablespoons of white vinegar to the water. The vinegar helps the egg whites coagulate more evenly. And choose fresh eggs. The fresher the eggs, the better. And you can break the egg right into a bowl like that. And just insert your egg right into the water. Let it set. And then as soon as it sets a little tiny bit, you can turn it over with the point of a spoon like that. You want the whole yolk covered. And your next egg. Keep adjusting the temperature of the water so that it doesn't come to a rapid boil and cause the egg to completely disintegrate. There, that looks good. Now here's a trick that I can show you. If you want to make a lot of poached eggs ahead of time, uh, have a bowl of iced water just as I do right next to you as you remove the poached eggs. And they can sit in the iced water even overnight. Here's a very nice poached egg. You just put it in the cold water. And look how great this egg looks. So perfect. And then, right before serving, you just reheat it in simmering water. So here our lardon are perfectly cooked. Just remove them and you'll finish up your dressing. Oh, it's so fragrant of bacon. I love the smell of this kind of bacon. Now add three tablespoons of very finely minced shallot, which is a member of the onion family. This gives a very nice flavor to the dressing. And I did say that we're using the fat of the bacon as our fat for our dressing. And the vinegar is a sherry vinegar, sherry wine vinegar. And this, too. Utterly delicious. A little salt, a little pepper. Raise the heat a little bit so that the shallots 
just cook just a little tiny bit. You can add your lardon right back in and you're ready to dress your salad. You just pour this dressing right over your frise. Toss and serve. A nice mound of frise studded with those golden lardons. And we're going to top this with one of the poached eggs. Now here's another little hint. Poached eggs are very wet. So to dry the egg without hurting it, just put it on a piece of bread like that uh, because really the egg stays so perfect. And just slide it very carefully on top of your salad. Sprinkle with salt and a little bit of black pepper. And before serving, I always like to cut a little slit right in the top of the egg so you know that it's perfectly cooked. So there you have it. A French salad that is fit for a French bistro. You can never go wrong serving this classic. This next recipe is from my daughter Alexis, who cooks three meals a day for anywhere from three to five people. So she's really busy and she loves to make beautiful food and this is a beautiful salad. And it's extremely delicious. The trick is to cut all of the vegetables into similar sized pieces so that each bite offers a colorful mix of flavors. Uh, first thing, corn goes into boiling water. I always add a touch of sugar, don't tell Alexis, and coarse salt. About a half a teaspoon of salt and just a big pinch of sugar. And cook the corn for six minutes. Now, string beans are cut into about quarter inch pieces and eliminate the tip. That will look pretty in the salad, so just cut them into quarter inch pieces. Have a pot of water boiling. And again, the water should be lightly salted. It does impart a very nice flavor to the beans. So this one's ready to go right back into the bowl. And this can go right into our pot of water. I'll put the green beans in first and yellow beans. These are called wax beans or yellow beans. I love the color of them. They're so pretty. And Alexis's children love this salad. They've been brought up on a lot of vegetables. And I think that when everything is cut up into a similar size, it's very appealing to young children. They think it's all just for them. So here's the yellow beans. They're a little bit more tender than the green beans. And so they can be put in now. I have a bowl of iced water right here next to me. And you see the ice is in the water, and then I have a strainer set into the iced water. That way no ice is gonna get into the vegetables when I finally take them out. Look at the color, isn't that great? So keep cooking those. Now I've pre-prepped all the other vegetables except the last tomato, just to show you. A plum tomato is good to use for this particular salad because uh, it doesn't really have very many seeds. It's a lot of pulp. Don't take the skin off. Just slice the tomato and squeeze out the seeds. Take the beans out of the water. Oh, they look perfect. Okay. We're just waiting for the corn. Six minutes and it should be ready to cool off. It smells so good. Again, this can be chilled also to make it easier to handle. Dry the corn on a towel and you can take it off right onto the towel. It's perfect. And then just slice right close to the cob, but don't take the cob with it. Break up the corn. Mm, looks so pretty. So now we're ready to use this corn. This can go right into your salad bowl. And now the string beans can also be dried in the same towel. Oh, they look perfect. 
add your tomatoes, your English cucumber that's been peeled, red pepper deveined and seeded, yellow pepper deveined and seeded, mm, red onion. And of course you could use white onion, green onion, beautiful cilantro leaves, jalapeno pepper, and dump in your string beans, golden and green. Sprinkle with black pepper and two teaspoons of salt and best quality olive oil, about two tablespoons of olive oil. That's one, two. And rice vinegar, this is Japanese rice vinegar. It is really good. And this too, two tablespoons and toss. Wouldn't you like to have this for lunch today or dinner? It is a very, very special and as you can see, easy to make salad. So there you have chopped salad a la Alexis. This salad really became one of my favorites. I hope it becomes one of yours as well. Enjoy. Italian chef Cesar Cardini, who worked, strangely enough, in Tijuana, Mexico, probably had no idea how famous his simple salad would eventually become. A great Caesar salad is defined by its dressing. And as the story goes, Cardini had just cooked for so many people, and the crowds kept coming and coming and coming into his restaurant. And by the end of the evening, he had nothing to serve them, so he invented a salad. He had a lot of greens. He had some garlic, he had some anchovies, and he had some crusty French bread, and he created what is now known as Caesar salad. There are so many renditions of Caesar salad, but very essential to the salad are the croutons. I'm using day-old crusty bread, and uh, I've sliced the bread about a half an inch thick, and then I'm cutting it into half-inch croutons. They're good in the salad, they're really nice, and they soak up the dressing. And once you make homemade Caesar dressing, you will never resort to the bottled type again. So I have one tablespoon of butter and one tablespoon of olive oil heated in a big skillet. And I'm just going to cook my croutons right here on top of the stove. Watch them. They're going to toast and they're going to become crispy. Make sure they all get a little bit of that butter and oil. And don't forget salt and pepper, very important. Uh, for the croutons, about a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of black pepper. This will make nice fragrant croutons. Let's start with the dressing. You will need some salt-packed anchovies and put those four anchovies in your salad bowl. Crush those with two cloves of chopped garlic and a little bit of salt. Just mash this up with a fork. The anchovies will mash. So here the anchovies are getting broken. Crush those pieces of garlic with a fork. Okay, so now we're ready to add our egg yolk. Signor Cardini, <laughs> whoever he was, dropped his eggs into the bowl from a great height. From way up high, watch this, and it plops and breaks, see? So we don't have to do too much to the egg yolk. It's all theater. And I think Mr. Cardini, Signor Cardini, was quite aficionado of the theater. Everybody's made up stories of this guy. And now add a half a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. It's a little generous, but I like, I like mustard. And one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. Now, if you don't want to use the raw egg, uh, you can substitute one tablespoon of store-bought mayonnaise. Mm, see, now it's starting to get creamy. Look at this. So I think um, we are okay. I'm gonna add a little bit of black pepper. I love black pepper. Now, the juice of one lemon. I like to cut the little ends off and slice the lemon like that. And indispensable in the kitchen 
And this is used all over Latin America and in various parts of Europe and the Middle East, the lemon squeezer. And it doesn't waste any of that delectable lemon juice. Whisk this together. And now add your olive oil. Just drizzle it in and you're going to make an emulsion, which is a liquid being thickened by the addition of oil. That's an emulsion. See how thick it's getting? And for a salad this size, you'll need about a half a cup of highest quality olive oil. So here is the basic dressing. Now to add the freshly grated Parmesan cheese. This is one cup. So here we have it. Look at that thick, delicious dressing. Okay, now the salad itself. Romaine lettuce is the lettuce of choice for the traditional salad. Now it's the one lettuce that people say you can cut. It actually looks kind of nice when it's cut crosswise. To stack it like this, cut lengthwise first and then crosswise. So cut it into you know, like inch pieces. See how easy this is? Now avoid buying romaine in plastic bags in the grocery store if you can. Better to get free heads that have not been packaged and always, no matter how your salad is uh, sold, always, always please uh, wash it at home and dry it very well in a salad spinner. Even if it says it's organic and packed in a clear plastic bag, wash your salad. Very important. So looking good, don't you think? Let them cool. Put the croutons all the way around and toss. Your salad dressing will coat every piece of the romaine and this will be the best Caesar salad you've ever tasted and the best your family has ever tasted. And if you like, you can take a piece of Parmesan and make a few Parmesan curls to go over the top. A little more texture, a little more prettiness. And there you have a Caesar salad that even Signor uh, Cardini would approve of. Enjoy. Butter lettuce is sometimes overlooked when it comes to making salads, but it's one of my preferred lettuces. Its sweet, tender leaves pair perfectly with a fresh citrus and yuzu vinaigrette. And this salad is uh, unusual, it's simple to make, and it is absolutely perfect when cooking for one or two. Break up one of the little butter lettuces. As you get into the heart of the lettuce, the leaves are whiter. On the outer leaves, these big leaves, which I'm not going to use for this particular salad, they're darker green. I like the little center leaves just about that size. So your lettuces should be well dried and broken into individual leaves. That's the salad. Now to make the dressing, this is the unusual part. Uh, we'll need some fresh ginger and fresh ginger comes in the store like this, like branches. And we just need a piece about that size. To peel ginger, just use the edge of a spoon like this and the peel comes right off. There's nothing easier then a spoon for removing the skin of ginger. I don't know who found this out, but thank you. It is the greatest method. Just look how clean and lovely that ginger looks when peeled with a spoon. If you were going to peel with a knife, you'd waste a lot of the ginger. This takes just the skin off. And so this peeled ginger is what you're going to grate now this was originally a wood rasp, which was adapted for kitchen use, and it is very, very fine grater. It acts pretty much like a wasabi grater, which the Japanese use. See how fine it is? It has a lot of fibers in the, in the ginger itself, and to grate it any other way is quite impossible. 
So this wood rasp is the perfect tool for the job. So two teaspoons of fresh grated ginger. Easy to do, right? And the juice of one lime. If you happen to have a yuzu fruit, which is a citrus fruit, uh, sort of a cross between a lemon and a lime. It has a bumpy green skin, a little difficult to find in the marketplace. But those are yuzus. They're grown now in California. They were imported from Japan. Uh, very flavorful, very fragrant. But we're using instead a yuzu vinegar, which is very, very nice. And we just need a tablespoon of yuzu vinegar and a tablespoon of safflower oil. This is a great oil to use for fragrant vinaigrettes because it has no flavor, uh, it is colorless, and it doesn't seize up or thicken when it gets cold. It stays like this, and it's very, very high in polyunsaturates. So it's a healthier oil than most others. Very good oil. Safflower comes from the safflower thistle. So that's the ginger dressing. Add two teaspoons of granular sugar. So it's a sweet dressing. And a pinch of salt. Just give it a little taste, important. Mmm, really, really good. And a little bit of pepper. Now I have three slices of avocado. This is going to be our surprise at the bottom of our salad. And you can just arrange those on a plate. You can sprinkle that with a little bit of sea salt, a little bit of pepper. And now toss your lettuce, the smaller leaves first. Just toss in the dressing. Start with the smallest leaves and arrange the salad. It's gonna be kind of a mounded salad. It's very pretty. But this way, each leaf is coated with that fragrant dressing. I just don't like to eat salads that have partially tossed lettuce. And if you just drizzle the oil over it, it's not going to dress each piece. Better to do it in the bowl. I wish you could smell this. It's really, really good. Now you can make this, oh, in the kitchen, right before your guests sit down. The bigger the bowl, of course, the easier to toss the lettuce, and the faster you'll be able to create your salad. Finishing touch, a little bit of toasted sesame seeds just sprinkled all over the exterior of your salad. And a little bit of your sea salt. And there you have an unusual, beautiful salad surprise with the avocado underneath. This is a Japanese yuzu salad. Enjoy it. Well, I certainly hope you've enjoyed this recipe along with all the other salads we made today. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Cooking School. For a creamy dressing, add two tablespoons of buttermilk and one tablespoon of lemon juice to a jar. Chop a half a teaspoon fresh tarragon and one and a half teaspoons of both flat leaf parsley and fresh chives. Then add the zest of a quarter of a lemon. Season with coarse salt and pepper. Lastly, add two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Shake to combine and serve over a crisp wedge of iceberg lettuce.